In this video, we're going to learn about otosclerosis under the following headings. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button so you will never miss any of my upcoming videos and already existing videos as well. I'm really happy that our channel is rapidly growing and we have reached 50,000 subscribers, hoping to get 1 lakh subscribers soon. Thank you so much for all your love and support guys. Otosclerosis is a disease of bony labyrinth of the inner ear which is also known as aortic capsule. Foci of cartilage rests are found to occur in the aortic capsule which changes to abnormal spongy bone where it is actually supposed to be in chondral bone. This usually involves the stapes bone which is one of the three bones of the middle ear and this leads to fixation of the stapes plate and hence hearing loss because the stapes plate is unable to move. Fissula antifenestrum is an area just in front of the oval window in middle ear and it is one of the very common area for otosclerosis to happen. About 50% people have a positive family history so it can be inherited, the rest of the cases being sporadic without a family history. It is more common in females. Hearing loss usually is found to occur in otosclerosis patients between 20 and 30 years of age it is unlikely to start before or after that. Conditions like pregnancy, menopause and acute stress conditions to the body like a major surgery have found to worsen the hearing loss associated with otosclerosis. It is found to be associated with a syndrome called van der Heef syndrome where it is found along with osteogenesis imperfecta and the patients have a blue sclera in the eye. Genes encoding type 1 collagen are involved in this condition. In certain patients with otosclerosis, RNA related to the measles virus have been isolated. Hence, a viral etiology also has been postulated. On macroscopic examination, it appears chalky white or grey in colour, but the active focus lesions appears red in colour due to increased vascularity or blood supply. In microscopy, Spongy bone is found among the normal enchondral layer. In immature foci, which are active lesions, we can see plenty of marrow and vascular spaces, many osteoblasts and osteoclasts, and cement as well. All these stains blue on hematoxyl and eosinin staining. Whereas the mature foci, which are inactive lesions, shows less vascularity, more bone, and more fibrillar substance. This usually stains pink in hematoxyl and eosinophil staining. Broadly, we can classify otosclerosis into three types stapedial, cochlear, and histological otosclerosis. Stapedial otosclerosis is the one involving the stapes, as the name suggests. It is further subdivided into five types based on the pattern of involvement. First type is called the anterior focus, where the lesion occurs in front of oval window called fissula antifenestrum, which I already mentioned is a very common focus or area for autosclerosis to occur. Next we have posterior focus type where it occurs behind the oval window. When it occurs circumferentially around the margin of stapes, it is called as circumferential type. And if it occurs on the foot plate, leaving the anterior ligament free, it is called the biscuit type. When the oval window region is completely obliterated, it is called obliterative type. The cochlear type of otosclerosis occurs around the round window, usually causing sensorineural hearing loss. It is not as common as stapedial otosclerosis. Histological type is one where the patients are asymptomatic and they don't have hearing loss. However, it is found only on histopathological examination. The symptoms are usually hearing loss. The hearing loss is usually the first concern to start with. It is often not associated with pain, but the hearing impairment is progressive. Often it is conductive type of hearing loss, which occurs due to fixation of the stapes foot plate. Patients with otosclerosis often hear better in a noisy environment than a silent environment. This paradox is called paracusis villisi. This is mainly because the speaker has to raise their voice in a noisy environment and hence the high intensity sound can be heard by the patient. Symptoms such as tinnitus and vertigo are uncommon 
and if occurs is usually seen in cochlear type of otosclerosis. In otoscopic examination, we can see reddish hue through the tympanic membrane, which shows the increased vascularity of an active lesion of otosclerosis, and this is called as Schwartz sign. And performing tuning fork tests, the results vary with stapedial and cochlear type of otosclerosis because in stapedial type we have conductive hearing loss, whereas in cochlear type we have sensory neural type of hearing loss. Considering stapedial type being the most common, we discuss the findings occurring in stapedial type here. Rennes test is negative, which means bone conduction is better than air conduction in the affected ear. Weber test is lateralized to the more affected ear. And absolute bone conduction is usually normal as it is usually conductive hearing loss. The results can be opposite in cochlear type where sensory neural hearing loss occurs. Pure tone audiometry reveals that air conduction is affected in lower frequencies of sounds. There is an interesting finding in bone conduction. There is a dip in the frequency at 2000 Hz in bone conduction and it is called as Carhart notch. This is seen in otosclerosis and it is usually disappears after surgery. When it comes to treatment, sodium fluoride tablets have been tried but hasn't shown results, hence they are not recommended anymore. Otosclerosis often requires surgery, either a stapedectomy or stapedotomy can be done. Stapedectomy involves removal of the entire stapes footplate and replacement of the microprosthesis. Stapedotomy however involves positioning the prosthesis in the hole created in the footplate of stapes. So the footplate isn't removed here in stapedotomy. So what's the prosthesis used here? It is usually a teflon prosthesis which is a polymer material or a combination of platinum and teflon or a titanium and teflon combination. So the fixed and sclerotic stapes is removed and it is replaced with the prosthesis between the incus and oval window. The overview of steps of stapedectomy includes giving a meatal incision and raising a tympanometal flap the stapes superstructure is removed. Now, if you are doing a stapedotomy, we put a hole in the foot plate for insertion of the prosthesis. Or if it is a stapedectomy, we remove part of the foot plate and replace it with the prosthesis. Now, the prosthesis is placed and the flap is closed. Complications include perforation of the tympanic membrane, injury to the cauda tympani nerve, which affects the taste sensation, facial nerve injury, vertigo, perilymph fistula, dislocation of the incus displacement of prosthesis, hearing loss, and dead ear, where there is complete hearing loss. You can download this PPT using the link in description. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you found this video really helpful, please hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out any of my medical lectures. You can watch more videos by clicking here. Also check out my other channel 2 minute doc by clicking the link you see here. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next video.